Good morning, everyone. It is May 11th. As you saw the, uh, it is Tuesday, too. Tuesday, May 11th. As you saw in the title, the, uh, the, um, title for this, uh, or as you saw in the, uh, the intro slide. Wow, I'm just, like, fumbling, bumbling, stumbling. As you see that, um, saw that, it is, uh, keep on running. So, uh, you know, I mean, I'm telling you, we can go whatever direction, you know me and my musical interests, so we can go whatever directions. I was just, I know it's not, it's keep on rolling, but Ario Speedwagon, man, just roll with the changes, you know, keep on rolling, keep on rolling, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. roll with the changes, bum, 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 tick, tick. love that, or if you're in a metal mood, you could go with Iron Maiden, you know, run to the hills, run for your life. Anyway, um, there I am, my craziness of the morning. Hello. So, um, but I'm telling you, man, I was so blessed by the word that God gave me this morning. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, um, it says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now there is so much in that one passage, those two verses, that there's no way I could cover it all today. Okay, so I may spend a little while, I may camp out here a while, because I need to hear this, and, I'm, and maybe you do too. But here's the good news out of this word this morning, and it is this. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So I was thinking about the race this morning, right? Because many times when I think about the race or any time in the past that I've read this passage, I've always thought about the race that's set before us as a... Um, as um, like a, the marathon in the Olympics, right? And you see the Olympians. And any time I read this passage, I just in my mind's eye, I kind of envision these Olympians that have run the marathon, and now they come into those final few laps, or maybe it's one lap into the Coliseum. And you know, as they're approaching the Coliseum, they're hearing the cheers of the people, and ah, everybody's going wild. And they enter in, and they just in there, you know, right before they finish, everybody's just cheering them on. And, uh, but that's not where I was this morning, right? So where I was this morning was I was reading this and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm tired of my feet pounding the ground. And what God really spoke to me was this, you know what? There is glory in that because God's in the painful parts. And I'm talking about, you know, I'm not a marathon runner, but you know, I'm a sprinter. So I'm like, get here, go and done. And so running long distances is not my specialty. And so, um, but as I think about marathon runners and what I've heard and understand about it, you know, of course, you got the runner's high that, and that most painful part of the run is right before you enter into that. Now, let's think about the race in this light. This race is set before us, right? At the starting line, there are thousands of participants. Everybody's there gathered up and everybody takes off. Everybody's excited. The gun goes off. Everybody starts running. And then you got to develop your own pace. Now, sometimes we can outrun ourselves and end up being more tired in the middle and have to try to regain and encourage ourselves. Um, for me, that would be what I do, man. I sprint, take off hard from the starting line, and then I end up dwindling down rapidly, right? I'm the tortoise and the hare. I'm the hare. And um, so anyway, so what we, what we uh, should take from this is, you know, there are times in our experience in our relationship with God where things are really exciting. That's the beginning and the end. I mean, in the end, we're going to run and finish and see that what Jesus has authored and finished in our faith. And at the beginning, there's the excitement of this is what you've been training for. This is this is the realization, the new creation. And so the beginning of our spiritual journeys are always so exciting. But what about those middle times? What about those times where we struggle? We get halfway through this race and it just hurts every time our foot pounds the ground. It's painful. Right? It's, it, it hurts. It struggles. We struggle through it. We have to just keep on pressing on. And it is in those times. Those are the beautiful times. And, you know, that's why I think that, that we, we see here where the author of Hebrews brings up Jesus and that he in finished and endured to the point of the cross and despised its shame. He redefined what the cross meant. Right? The cross was meant for shame and guilt. Now it represents 
forgiveness and grace and so what in our run as we're running through here and we see and people are going to look at us and they're going to say man you're struggling you're just like everybody else and everything that w the rest of the world looks at as guilt and shame we can now redefine as grace in our lives and so as we struggle every time our foot pounds the ground instead of just thinking about the pain that's caused when we get to this point because see it says let you know we're surrounded by so great a cloud but and we are right and they are cheering us on but there's times when you run a marathon where there's not a lot of people around after the start you know the runners pace themselves off and they and they end up getting separated from one another you don't stay in that same group so that you don't have this group running with you and so you end up running alone and as you're running alone, that's when you're left to your own thoughts. You don't have anybody setting a pace for you. All this stuff, and it gets to be a struggle. Well, in that time, that is the most beautiful time of the race. And I know this sounds crazy. This is contrary to what we think. Because we like the finish. We like the glory. But the beautiful time is that time when we're all alone, when there's nobody but us and God. And it's in those times that God can speak softly, gently into our ears and give us the encouragement. And those pain of every time that foot hits the ground, think of that every time. Pow, 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 pow. Think of that as the applause of the crowd. Because a crowd's not going to be seen. We don't see them in those times. There's nobody standing out there holding a cup of wanting to give us water or Gatorade to encourage us along in a race. It's those dead periods, those, those quiet times of the run. And those are the times where we seem to lose heart. And we end up giving up and we end up just stopping. And we think, is this even worth it? And we're left to our own thoughts. But that's when we need to let the word in. And we need to know that God, that Jesus himself, authored our path. He has written down our faith and our path before us. And not only that, but he's guaranteed to finish it. And so that's where we can find encouragement. That even in the midst of the most difficult, painful times of when we're struggling every day, you know, and we're in that day-to-day -day grind of the world, right? Everybody goes through this. It is in those times that our faith becomes evident. Our faith is what keeps us putting one foot in front of the other. And in that, we realize that we can surpass, we can go beyond our boundaries that we previously had set before us. That we can press through the hardships and the trials and the tribulations that so many times in earlier in the race might have shut us down. But instead of being shut down, we can continually press through. Because we will rely not on the strength of ourselves, but the strength of Christ that resides within us. And so I just want to encourage you guys today, don't be discouraged. When you get to those hard times, when you get to those times where it just hurts to put every foot in front of the other, and you think, what am I even doing all this for? That is the most beautiful part of the race because it's in these times that God pulls you aside and can talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. It's in these times that your faith is made evident by putting one foot in front of the other. So be encouraged. Live the life. Be the revolution. Let the re revolution happen within your own heart. Revival happens one man at a time. And so I pray, and one, one woman, I'm not being sexist here this morning, so I pray that wherever you are in your walk today, that you would be encouraged and that revival would break out in your own spirit. That you would allow the Holy Spirit that's within you to fully flourish to show himself mighty and true and be evident in your life. That's what I'm praying for for myself. I'm praying that I'll run this race, that the Lord will continually give me encouragement. And even when it hurts to put the next foot on the ground, I'm going to keep running because I'm determined to finish the race that he's put before us. May each of you be blessed mightily by God. May you experience his abundant grace in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day. Be blessed.